Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. I just got a few DC updates for you today, but before I get into that, I have to thank my newest members of the Ping Pong Flick Show, my friend John Aaron Garza. Thank you so much for joining. And also Shane S. Alman. Thank you so much to you both for joining the Ping Pong Flick Show as members and supporting my channel. Definitely uh, real anarchy once you get your join button. I'm coming over. So, but let's get on with the show. The first topic of the day is Black Mask is heading to Batwoman. Wow. Now, I did not expect that. Now, I didn't watch season one, so I don't even know if he was, uh, you know, kind of, you know, hinted at being going to be in Black um, a Batwoman or not. But Essentially, this is going to be probably, I'd say, the second time we see a live-action black mask. And this time, it's going to be over on the CW. So, this is coming from my friends over at DC Verso for EW Entertainment Weekly. Batwoman showrunner Carolyn Dries confirmed that we will see black mask in season two of the series. Along with the false-faced society, we will see the leader of this gang, the black mask later in the season so that's interesting i'm wondering how he is going to look is he going to invoke and capture the essence and the look of black mask in batwoman you know because batwoman the season two um like i've seen season one outfit and i would say season two looks a lot better like they put a little bit more budget into that um and I, i'm you know like i said i haven't seen season one so i don't know i have no real opinion on the show so i'm eager to watch season two and see how that is and maybe go back to season one but maybe not you know but we'll see i want to see what type of villains are in this show um how the story is how the acting is how and cw so i'm not really expecting much but i do enjoy some cw you know i did enjoy smallville i do enjoy the flash i do i, I enjoy parts of supergirl and you know the first few episodes of arrow are pretty good but you know i never gone on further than that so looking forward to seeing what batwoman is all about especially season two as they kind of you know in a way try to start over if you will. So I think I think that's their goal here. And I don't know if Black Mass is going to be one of the ultimate villains or not. I don't think so. But it's great to see other DC villains show up and what type of interpretations we get to see of these DC villains. All right. But let's get on with the heroics. Aldous Hodge prepares for Hawkman in Black Adam. Now, this is someone something we always forget about and, and we kind of just take it for granted. <laughs> uh, like, there's going to be a DCEU Hawkman. Like, that is cool, right? I mean, we're, we're always like, well, who's going to be the DCEU of this, DCEU of that? We're going to get DCEU Hawkman, DCEU Dr. Fate, Black Adam. These are the first versions of that in the DCEU. So I am excited, and I think you should be too. But this is coming from Screen Rant, but Black Adam updates put it out. Uh, Aldous Hodge, who will play Hawkman in Black Adam, teases how much research he has done for the character. This is his excerpt right here. It says, as far as research, I've done all kinds of research. I read all the graphic novels from the Justice Society of America to the Hawkman series. I find myself really enjoying who and what he is and how he is. And I, and I know what we have in store for how we're going to show him. It's got me really excited. And, uh, and hopefully we get to see something really soon they're going to start shooting i believe um this year and so we're i think it was in april or something like that it, it's pretty soon and so we're gonna probably get to see his suit as well his costume um also the suit everybody's suit as well and i think that's the most exciting part of when production starts uh, especially on all these dc films everybody's wondering what is the suit going to look like? Or, oh, is that blurry shot? I want to clear it up. You know, it, it excites me. Like I've always said, it really excites me when we get to that point where we're kind of debating and we're trying to figure out what he's going to, how he's going to wear, what he's going to wear. All this fan art comes out. All these fan manipulations comes out. 
and it's exciting to actually see the final product and compare it and you know that's where a lot of the debate goes but for the most part hopefully it looks cool right and hopefully it you know it, it, it within the context of the story it works well and if the concept art that we've seen and that's just concept art for black adam then that looks pretty awesome if they can take that and make it look awesome live action then hell yeah let's see all this hodge as hawkman uh i'm really looking more forward to you know dr fate but hawkman that's awesome dcu's first hawkman this is this is going to be pretty uh, exciting nonetheless. All right. So let's get into Zack Snyder's Justice League. Collider today has an exclusive <laughs> or exclusive oh, if you're David Film Chunky. Um, but this is coming from Collider exclusive. Harry Lennox confirms that he is the Martian Manhunter and will appear in the Snyder Cut when it premieres on HBO Max later this year. Watch him deliver the news. Now you're probably thinking... Chris, we already we already knew he was Marsh Manter. That's true. You know, I don't know if he's actually said it out loud or not, or we have a recording of him saying, yes, I'm Marsh Manhunter. But we all knew because Zack Snyder said he was Marsh Manhunter, right? We were we already knew that. So it's not really, you know, an exclusive, but I guess they got him, got footage of him talking about it. But how but he does come up with some interesting words of for um, no, the Steiner cut and kind of just confirms what, you know, when he shot it and things like that. So check out little clips of this Collider video. About uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. It, it's basically out there that Martian Manhunter was always meant to be a part of Zack Snyder's original cut. It was always rumored that your character in the first two Zack Snyder's Superman films was meant to be Martian Manhunter. Can we put those things together? I think... You know, we could put the rumor to bed. Yes, I'm. Uh, I am the Martian Manhunter. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, so I am eternally grateful to Zach uh, for seeing it through. You know, it came about in a very circuitous way, right? You know, the fans demanded uh, that his vision be given a, a, a fair hearing, a fair viewing, if you will. And so uh, he actually tagged me on up. Uh, on a post, it was an Instagram post where he showed the the canisters of the of the cut, of Snyder cut, and uh, and so it's complete. Uh, when exactly it comes out, I don't know. I've I've heard March. Uh, I don't know when in March, uh, or even if it will be in March. But that said, you know I'm over the moon about it. And to be in all honesty, uh, I had never heard of Martian Manhunter <laughs> until until these uh, until Zach you know, brought him to, to light. And of course, a lot of fans did know about Martian Manhunter, but I tell you, it's uh, he's a founder of the Justice League, a co-founder, um, a very powerful uh, figure. And it's it's going to be great to be up there with Batman and Superman and my my pals. <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, once again, like a kid at a candy store. You know, Zack Snyder posted, uh, you know, basically concept art, you know, you're revealing that Martian Manhunter was always going to be a part of it. And recently, and he, I think the note that came with it was that he wasn't able to get basically, basically it was like he had everything except you in the can. Uh, so you appear. So was it over the last few months that you got that footage in the can? Yes. Uh, you know, this is a brave new world as we talk about, but, uh, but yes, you know, so I was on a green screen basically. So you can actually film things in a way where you don't have to, uh, you know, endanger people. But I did shoot, yeah, with, with Zach and his team uh, back, I think, in August or something like that. We did a small uh, little thing. Would it have maybe been October? Yes, it was. I'm sorry, Liz. Yes, it was. It was. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do you have your take on him? Do you have, like, your kind of perspective on who he is as a character? As a founder of the Justice League, obviously, that is his... You know, he's a, a good person. He's a heroic uh, figure. He's, uh, you know, not a bad man. Like he's not trying to, he's trying to actually make the world better. So, you know, I, again, I think uh, anybody in, in that league is, um, is already sort of determined, you know, to be virtuous. And I, th I think he's a very virtuous character. As I say, I didn't know much about him. I did, I did some research later, uh, you know, 
to just sort of shore up my knowledge about who this, who this guy was. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of it is going to be in the hands of, of Zach and, uh, and, and the context of what it was that was shot, you know, in London, uh, I guess a few years back now. Okay, that was Harry Lennox talking a little bit about Martian Manhunter. Of course, confirming it if he already didn't know, uh, but also confirming that it was shot in Mar um, in October rather. And also, he doesn't know he believes it's coming out. The trailer's coming out in uh, you know the movie's coming out in March as well. And uh, also about that, you know, Martian Manhunter to him, he is one of the founders of the Justice League. So. I'm wondering if that plays into the actual movie. Not only does he actually gets to see, you know, um, Lois Lane as Martha, but maybe there's additional scenes that he did talk about. He shot on green screen. So maybe there's more things in there possibly that he could have uh, other scenes that he could be a part of. Like, is there going to be a scene of them kind of getting the Justice League together? You know, like at the end or something, like, yeah, let's let's have this Justice League. You know, are, are we going to have that? Maybe they have a reveal that he's Martian Manhunter to the team. Um, I don't know how much they can do, but definitely this is Hollywood and this is Zack Snyder. So there's a lot of movie magic that could definitely happen. But um, very exciting to hear. Uh, he sounds really uh, excited to be, you know, Martian Manhunter working with Zack. And he can't wait for us to see it as well, I believe. Um, and I can't wait to see it as well. So one of the biggest, you know, there's several, there's a lot of mysteries for Zack Snyder's Justice League. And Martian Manhunter is one of those biggest mysteries. And the context of how he appears, the context of how, what he, he does in the movie, how much he interacts with the other characters, and ultimately his role towards the end of the film. So I'm really curious and I can't wait to find out. Right, a little bit more about Zack Snyder's Justice League. This came out, Lex Luthor's bodyguards in Zack Snyder's Justice League. So this is a Instagram post from Little Swan, uh, Leaves Dance Studios. A bit of girl power for those enjoying Comic-Con today. This was back in October uh, 27, 2018. Some people dug it up. Here's a mini clip of BTS gun training we had as Lex Luthor's guards for Justice League. An additional extra added scene in one ending, which we filmed in beautiful Monaco. Uh, super fun experience us girls had and with the great pleasure of being trained by our, our incredible team here. There's a lot of people. So um, this is something that we've got. We didn't really see. We only saw them on the boat. But it looks like they actually had training uh, to do these scenes where they actually like Zack Snyder had talked about how, you know, he he feels that. Uh, in order for them to look like they know how to use guns, you can't just pick up a gun and make like you're using it. They needed training. So they spent, uh, I think it was like months, training to use weapons, to use guns properly. And so they did. And so it's unfortunate that we never got to see them in action. So I wanted to bring up this. And I think, I don't know... If any of this, you know, like, um, you know, uh, there's the scenes of them actually doing, you know, uh, actual, you know, in the film or not, but uh, definitely shout out to the stunt team again, because they're the ones that make these fights possible. <laughs> and a lot of these stuff you see that the stunt people do, we didn't see in the movie, right? They, they totally took a lot of that out, maybe because it was too violent, it'll scare the kids or scare the... The, the executives kids or something i don't know whatever but this is definitely rated r stuff uh definitely a lot of fighting in here that we never got to see and we will get to see in zack snyder's justice league so i'm really happy that these people this stunt crew and all the all the actresses here will get to you get to see them in their their movie you never got to see them in the theatrical cut because Joss Whedon cut a whole ton of stuff. Uh, a lot of people worked hard on this movie, and it's great to see that we'll finally get to see and experience uh, what they had in mind for the movie. But by the way, I just, I'm not sure, but when I saw this little area here where he has two swords 
and there's some people in the background it looks like the, the stunt women here i'm wondering if this is um his two swords here is actually deathstroke right because it just reminds me of deathstroke having two swords and killing them like that i mean it could be just the history lesson for sure but i'm just wondering two swords uh, maybe they're fighting off guards in the background. I don't know. Maybe this is the part where um, there is some type of action with Deathstroke and Lex Luthor's bodyguards and when in which they get to use weapons. They get to use, utilize their skills that they train so hard on to make them look believable. And, um, and that's why I think they definitely, hopefully, they really shine in the film, and I think they will. And we'll get to see Deathstroke and Lex Luthor bodyguards just kick some ass, like how they should, like how they should be shown, right? I mean, I, I, I'm still amazed by looking at these clips here. Like, I'm, we're gonna get to see some pretty awesome action. Like, this is the Justice League fight here. You see Aquaman, Steppenwolf. I've shown this before. If you're if you're a new subscriber, then maybe you've not seen it. But um, definitely, some awesome action will be had in this movie and i can't wait to see what and how that turns out all right well that is pretty much it for all the news topics of the day but let's get on to the ping pong flicks members comments and questions like you like i said uh if, if you want to see your comment or question be read on on air on this video uh or on the next video rather Please join as a member down below and then comment or question on this video. And so the next daily show, I will answer your question. All right, here we go. The first topic or con you know comment of the day, rather, it comes from Brandon Hayes. And this is regards to my Army of the Dead little teaser, not really breakdown, but just like a teaser excitement when you show that little Army of the Dead teaser. Uh, Zack Snyder rules. I'm looking forward to this zombie movie, and I don't even like zombie films. I agree with you. You know, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of zombie films. I like Dawn of the Dead. It, it's, it's a great movie. Um, but, you know, I don't really go into Walking Dead. I don't really, like, go out of my way to watch zombie films. You know that that's kind of like I was kind of tired of with zombie films because there were just there were just so many coming out and out and so I got tired of it. But seeing what you know, Army of the Dead is going to be, it's a different spin on it, right? There's it's a heist film, it's a team, it's got it's almost like uh, you know aliens meets zombies in a way. Uh, and also, I do know a few cool things that are going to be in this. Um, in this movie as well, some super stuff, and uh, I can't wait to see those little aspects. So I, I'm really looking forward to Army of the Dead, uh, and that's why I kind of, you know, when, when something comes out for Army of the Dead, I do a genre, etc. Because, you know, I, I love DC, definitely, 100%, but, you know, I love other films as well. And I felt like I want to show you my love for other things as well in, in those genre, etc. segments. In fact, there's another one coming out, like, tomorrow um uh another genre etc and it has to do with metal gear solid but um eric blake love the shot of the guy busting a gut laughing as he fires a boatload of rounds into i assume a boatload of zombies yeah killing zombies be fun <laughs> yeah i don't know if you guys seen but in the the teaser and i i forgot to mention it but to the right of that dude some dude's head just blows up and I think that's a zombie. I, I, you know, I looked that over and over, but he just definitely blows up, so his head just explodes. Frankie Cruz, I'm sure you mentioned this before, but how do you feel about the Birds of Prey movie? I initially liked it, but after a second viewing, I liked it less. Its tone is different to where I couldn't picture Superman, Batman, etc. being in that movie. I think the movie should have been the Birds of Prey versus Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman, Black Mask, and Victor Zaz still in the movie as well. I think this particular uh, you know, Birds of Prey movie works better than Elseworlds. And, you know, I, I too... Um, I liked it the first time, then a re I only rewatched it maybe twice, and I, I, I'd say it's on the bottom of my DCU rankings list. You know, I'll say that. Like it's not it's not my favorite DCU movie at all. It's not something I'd rewatch uh probably anymore. Um, but definitely it's not in my, you know, top, you know, DCU films at all. It's like it's the bottom one. So but not to say it's not a uh, enjoyable film. It is enjoyable, but it's just I just don't have a feeling 
or need to go back for more, if you will. Um, now, the Birds of Prey versus Harley Quinn, or actually Birds of Prey versus Gotham City Sirens, was supposed to be like a, uh, a third movie or the second movie or something, I think. It, it was supposed to be something like that. Uh, but um, that never happened, and it could be because it wasn't successful. And so I don't think they're going to go forward with this. I think they're looking forward to how James Gunn's The Suicide Squad is going to come out um to see what they're gonna do next with harley quinn of course it doesn't mean margot it's margot robbie's production team so she could probably finance the next one if, if you know the, the studio gives her the green light but you know we'll see what happens uh eric blake here's an, a, a, an idea if deathstroke is going to go after those close to bruce something we haven't seemed to bring up what about selena once married now parted and now bat flick and carlo gugino's catwoman are reunited having to work together against this threat throughout the film and perhaps ultimately alfred is shot early on in part one deeply injured and fighting for his life but ultimately the one bruce loses to deathstroke's blade at the climax is selena yeah i don't know you know any of that could happen just like i said you know zach didn't even know who the catwoman was until um, I think uh, Kat from um, League of Mayhem mentioned that. How about Carlo Gugino? And he's like, "That's a great idea." So it's it, that you know, it's so it, they could rework work that in. Um, definitely, if they wanted to do something, there they could come up with something cool. You know, Ray Fisher giving his frankly kind of reassuring statement about the Flash film makes me wonder, as I put on my tinfoil hat, how connected is Hamada really to the project? I can't help thinking about the previously assigned director duel. If I recall correctly, didn't they come in during the Hamada era? And then Ezra Miller took issue with the direction the film was going, hence his script with Grant Morrison. The end result was a new director, Andy Muschietti, and script he is content with. So in other words, Hamada had his time regarding the film, and Ezra effectively seized authority over the project from Hamada, probably with Jim Lee's blessing. Therefore, Ray Fisher is content to stay in the film, because as far as he's concerned, Hamada is no longer involved. No, I think Hamada is definitely involved in that one. In fact, Andy Muschietti... Uh, Hamada comes from the horror side, you know, New Line Cinema. So it was the horror side. And I think he actually brought in Andy Muschietti. Like, um, in a way, they're just coming from over from the um, New Line Cinema side. So I think he's still involved in that. Uh, I don't think Ezra seized any authority whatsoever. I think um, it's that it's, it's going to be problematic if they had to recast flash and so i probably eventually just said yes that's a good idea that's a great script and something like that so and they just went ahead uh with that so yeah i think hamada is still definitely involved he is the dc films president he did green light this stuff and so he's going to be credited for as well in terms of him being involved creatively yeah you're right maybe he's not involved creatively creatively like the other projects he may just be there just like check marking like who do you need um uh, who do you want me to contact to get these people um and we're gonna agree like this we're gonna go ahead with this and stuff like that so that's how i see it anyway um sean gates i'm not sure if warners is trying to undermine uh, Zack snyder's just leak and hbo max or if the concern is really about piracy Every time a new season of Stranger Things drops on Netflix, there are bootlegs available on Amazon practically overnight. The pirates probably make out pretty well since it takes Netflix approximately three to five millennia to drop a Blu-ray and they never actually announce anything. I don't think most Snyder fans would ever buy a bootleg. We're typically smarter and more savvy than that and we want our guy to get paid and to be asked to do more of these. But they're advertising this thing like crazy and they're trying to get the casual fan to check it out and the normies won't care about supporting Zach the way we do. So they're may, maybe being proactive. Sorry if this was too long. I'm a writer and have a lot of trouble distilling my thoughts down to a few words. Words are the colors on my palette. Maybe just give your thoughts and don't read this on the show. I don't know. Sorry. No problem. I'm, that's actually a nice put um yeah nothing more than that length so definitely but where's steven and uncle word writer problems <laughs> where is he did but um no uh you know and uh, like i said you know piracy is nothing new and piracy has been around for decades and decades no other you know film has that you know it, it's an issue definitely but it's something that they try to stop here and there like i 
um, like it, trying to get it off Netflix is a lot harder than people may realize, or it's not as easy as before. It's still possible. Um, doing things like that is still possible. Um, but definitely it's, it's something that has been around for a long time. And it's something that's expected, whether it goes on, you know, straight to DVD or not, because when it goes to physical, they can copy that too. You know, they can rip it off, you know, even more so actually. And so there's a, there's a lot of that going on. So um, I don't know um, if it's, it's, if it's true that it's still coming out in March, the physical copy, I'm just thinking that it would be work best to come out on HBO Max to, to make sure we build it, um, you know, build their subscription base over there, uh, build the you know the need for HBO Max over there, uh, and then maybe a few months down the line, of course, put it out to physical copy like everything else. Game of Thrones did the same thing. You know, everything that comes out does it. So it's not like it's not like where you can stop something. You know, it's this is uh, piracy has been out everywhere. It's it's, it's no question that that's a that's a problem for every single movie or TV show, but they go by with it. They, they're still successful with it. In fact, when it comes out in movie theaters, that's easily pirated too. Yeah, and it might not be good quality or sometimes they get a hold of the little thing. And so it's, it's, it's easy to do that uh, for those people who want to do that. And they're not going to stop doing that. But if we can support it, um, you know, in an area that could garner uh, a warrant, a need to, you know, have make sequels, then I think it should just stick on HBO Max or even even go out to theaters as well. So it shows that there is a definitely need for a subscription base, and it shows Warner Media shows AT and T that this is a strong, this is a popular, this is this is saving HBO Max in a way. This is gonna. Um, give us more subscribers and we should continue this, you know, and not just, you know, um, you only see profits going this way and that because they still have to put in money to actually make physical copies. If they put it on HBO Max, you know, it's really nothing really out of their pocket more than just throwing on a service and stuff. So um, I don't know. And that's just my opinion, my feeling in any case. But hopefully it, if it does come out physical as well, hopefully they all it all does well. Hopefully, it just still it still garners um, enough attention and enough money for the studio to say yes. Let's let's green light, um, you know, the sequels definitely. So, but yeah, that's that's how I see it anyway. All right, that is it for this show. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you absolutely love this daily dose of DC content and movie shows and video games, including my new genre etc. segments. Please click the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, keep this hot dog light on, and I'll see you next time.